Okay, we're back. We're live with energy. Wow, energy. At 4 p.m. on a given Wednesday. This is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And uh, we have Peter Rossig and we have James McKay. And they're both going to talk about their respective areas of interest today. And the first thing is the hot news uh, from the press release about Project Footprint. Peter, what is that? Well, Project Footprint um, is an effort to uh, involve our customers more in the overall challenges of what we have to do. You know, we always say uh, if we're going to have clean energy, if we're going to get off oil, if we're going to reduce emissions and, and reduce our carbon footprint, it, it involves everybody. It's not just us. It involves everybody. And I think by now people are kind of coming around to that. So uh, Project Footprint is a way to uh, kind of remind people of that. We've always tried to have a relationship with our customers around energy efficiency and conservation uh, since long before there was Hawaii Energy, which is the PUC uh, organization that does that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what it is, is you sign up and you get a, a couple of little freebies, a bag and some other stuff. And if you do certain things, uh, you get other little awards. And, you know, as we say, the small print while supplies last. But don't worry. You were, we got plenty. So, uh, and there'll be more of these as we go forward. Right now, there are four basic things. Uh, electro uh, electronic uh, billing, uh, automatic payment, because that will help reduce the number of trees that we have to kill to get money, to get your money, which we still have to do. Uh, but, you know, that that's one thing pretty much everybody can do and a lot more people could benefit and you get some little awards. If you buy an electric vehicle, if you put solar on your roof, there's other awards, you know, not huge, but then they're, but they're, they're substantial and, and they're just one more little incentive these, to get you. Incentives. We're talking about incentives to make people conscious of what's going on right. and these benefits that are available um, and to incentivize them to do certain conduct like electric vehicles. Exactly. And uh, the other part of it is, you know, you'll see, you'll begin to see people with the uh, project footprint uh, logo on their stuff. And you'll know these are people that have taken that step. And that's that's important. You know, if you drive certain kinds of electric vehicles, everybody knows you're driving an electric vehicle because it's a little different than the others. Um, if you have solar on your roof at home, your neighbors can see you have solar, but nobody else knows that you're actually making a, a meaningful contribution. So yeah. now, you know, you'll have a little bit of, of swag, I guess you'd say. Uh, swag. To, uh, to show people, you know, and show them in other circumstances. And, it, you know, it's not a huge reward. We know that. But it's a, it's a small reward, and it's, it's a thank you. Uh, it's a little incentive, and it's a reminder. And as we go forward, we're going to have other activities, other behaviors going to be added that you can get uh, awards for. And, you know, some people respond to that. Some people do it just because it's the right thing to do or it's the cool thing to do. But and so all kinds of different people have different reasons. And, and the basic premise is, you know, when you were a little kid, you didn't have a very big footprint. Uh, and you should continue to try to have the smallest possible footprint. Uh, and uh, you, uh, you get it. You know, got you, it, yeah. you got it. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's just one other way for the electric company. Uh, we're not just, we are, in the, of course, in the business of supplying electricity and getting paid for it. But we've had a long tradition of interaction with our customers. Uh, you know, whether it's recipes in the newspaper or the old electric kitchen, uh, we turn out volunteers for community activities. We uh, donate to community activities. Uh, you know, we're every single one of us who works for the Hawaiian Electric Companies on Oahu, Maui, Molokai, Lanai, and the Big Island. We all live here. We're not, you know, attached to somebody else. It's our community, and we we've always tried to be more than just a, uh, you know, some company yeah, that sends yeah. you electricity and a bill every month. <laughs> I've seen you. I go down to these, uh, you know, things like the uh, Boy Scouts uh, uh, Onizuka event every mm -hmm. year. And uh, you guys are there in force. Oh, All yeah. volunteers, too. It's yeah, quite Yeah, thousands. Nice. Uh, we, we tally it up at the end of the year and, you know, tens of thousands of hours of volunteers, the employees themselves, their families, their kids. Uh, it's turned into a fun outing. We've gone and dug up uh, loys on some Hawaiian uh, you know, property and, and we've, I was, one of my proudest accomplishments was, uh, like Huck, uh, was it Tom Sawyer, I helped to paint the fence at the, uh, at the that. Hawaii Humane Society. I remember that. Did so you really? <laughs> I did, I did. I, I have, uh, I probably have, still have the t-shirt with the paint on it. So, you know, we're in the community. We are actively engaged with our 
and our you know friends and neighbors and family and uh, this project footprint is just a small way to to spread that out you know we still have hawaii energy uh, which is working they give you a rebate if you do certain kinds of things and they're promoting energy efficiency and just came out with a new deal that if you uh, if you put a uh, a fast charger in your multifamily dwelling or in your workplace will give you a, an incentive, a rebate working with Ulapono. So mm -hmm. they're very active on, on some things, but we are still where people look for energy information. There's, yeah. We're still where the, you know, the, the trusted source, I think, oh. for people to say, you know, well, what is Hawaiian Electric? Is, is this a good deal? Is this work? Is this meaningful? So we're still function like that. And this is just part of that in the community. Yeah. Hawaiian Electric Company's Hawaii's electric company. That's, I, I you Since know. Since what, 1910 or something? 19, you know? yeah, in 1876. Oh, and Princess K it, threw the switch. But <laughs> you're close. Don't, don't, don't put in for your, uh, your exam, your oral exam on Hawaiian history just yet. But King Kalakaua, he electrified Hawaii, the Iolani Palace. A renewable energy originally, uh, he was getting, he had, there was a dynamo down by New Water Stream. And after that, he, uh, you know, a bunch of businessmen got together and he gave them their, his blessing and he encouraged them and they formed the Hawaiian Electric Company. Ta-da, we've been here ever since, 120 you know, days, six, You used the term days. engagement a minute ago, and, yeah. I, and I really think that's important because we had a show earlier today on, on news and the, uh, the priorities of news items. Uh, as a spokesman, you know, I'm sure you're sensitive um, that, that, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you have you have a, a, a point of news, a point of consciousness that sort of rides down and you have to bring it up every now and then. Right. You have to exactly. make it top of mind for people. And they may not, you know, on a daily basis, there are hundreds of things that come at us. And sometimes we forget the important things. And one of the important things is we live uh, in, in, in a renewable energy community. We have goals and targets. We have a, a, an industry that cares about this uh, and a government that cares about it. So we have to be reminded. And I think the program you described, the Footprint Program, uh, as a side effect has, has that kind of benefit, that people are reminded that we live here, we live in the world of renewable energy, Hawaii, the state of clean energy and all that. Right. Uh, and that's what, you know, aside from all the benefits and incentives, it reminds them of where that issue is on the priorities. Yeah. Absolutely. I think everybody, you know, you see a, a commercial or you hear a program and you say, you know, I'm going to turn off the lights every time I leave the room. There's no reason for all those lights to be on. And that lasts a week, maybe two weeks and one thing and another. So, you know, if the hardest thing to change about people is behavior. And uh, so this is, as you say, another reminder, another thing that this is, you know, part of a busy life and it's important. And, uh, you know, we got to do it and got to keep doing it and got to remind ourselves every so often to go to the gym, turn off the lights and, uh, you know, all those things that we're supposed to do. So they, you're exactly right. Yeah. And we're going to turn off the lights now for just a moment. <laughs> okay. We're going to have a short break, Peter, and we're going to break the James McKay. And then when you come back, I will have disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jay. I appreciate thank, the thank chance you, to talk about Always it. Always nice to have you. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Aloha. Bye. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. All right, we're back, we're live. I'm Jay Fidel. The fellow you can't see anymore is Peter Rosek from Hawaiian Electric. <laughs> the fellow you can see is James McKay from Amoresco. Brilliant. James, thanks for coming down. Pleasure. We want to know everything about Amoresco. Amoresco is into Ooh. building efficiency, building energy efficiency mostly. And you, you have a, a place in Pacific Guardian Tower. We made a, 
uh, a movie about that for OC16 not too long ago. Yep. We want to find out more from you about the changes in MRSCO, its, it's arrival, full force, okay, and what it's doing. Full force in Hawaii. Well, uh, yeah, we've actually been in the Hawaii market for a little while, maybe six or seven years, but um, predominantly we're an East Coast company. Uh, like all good things from America, I guess, have been spreading west. They've gone as far as they can go. My head office is out of the Seattle area, mm -hmm. um, and so my bosses are up there, Portland and Seattle. Um, I took over the, the region here about a year and a half ago, and really we're, we're focusing on, just like Peter discussed, the energy efficiency side is critical. Uh, my professional background in Hawaii was commercial solar, and um, the, the most important part of solar is actually energy efficiency, which sounds counterintuitive, but... If you really think about it, generation, which is also what Amoresco does, is a very expensive way to create energy. So the, the, the tagline is you always want to reduce before you produce. Yeah. So the energy efficiency side is critical because the cheaper measures, just like we talked about, turning off the lights, that behavioral stuff is, is very important. But like Peter said, behavior is hard and you can't make a business case depending on people's behavior that's going to vary. So what we do, we specialize uh, core bread and butter business is something called an energy services performance contracting model or ESPC. It's a success contract, isn't it? It is. It's a guaranteed success contract. I'd hate to use the term no-brainer contract because <laughs> it's actually a very complicated uh, mechanism, but it's used nationally. Uh, Hawaii actually leads the, the states in all of these contracts huh. per capita and I think per dollar figures now. So we have more ESPC contracts going and they're performed by what we are, an energy services company, an ESCO, ESCO. Mm -hmm. So you hear other names around. Ours is embedded in the name, so you can't forget what we do. But we're probably the most uh, smaller, nimble ESCO company in that we can do renewables and these ESPC contracts. Well, I, you know, you talk about renewables and efficiency, and, you know, it, it, it seems like it's a non sequitur, but it, it both, uh, the underlying point is it's smart. It's smart energy. Yeah. And so you come to me, I'm a, I'm a building owner. I always wanted to be a building owner. Yeah. Mm, you <laughs> might regret that, but yeah. <laughs> and you say to me, look, we're, we're going we're gonna to make you, first we're going to make you efficient, and then we're going to give you renewables to power what's, what's left. Exactly. Um, and the bottom line is that everybody wins. Uh, you know, we save money. The tenants always derivatively save money. Um, the state is better off because the state is using solar power. Yep. Um, and we're being smart about it. And, exactly. and there's been, you know, over the years, I'm sure you can comment on this. Over the years, there's been a lot of waste in big buildings yep. um, about, you know, the use of energy because we, we didn't have smart systems. Now, Amoresco is, is a specialist in smart systems. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so it's also not just the smart system, it's also the smart financing, really. That, and that's critical to where the state is today. Mm. So a big issue that facility managers and building owners would be very familiar with is deferred maintenance. So the standard procurement model is actually what's left Hawaii very behind in that if you are owning or operating a, a bunch of buildings, um, they generally go to ask the CFO, chief financial officer, or the legislature in our case for public buildings, you know, we need $2 million to upgrade all these air conditioners and widgets and gadgets. And the CFO says, well, I've only got half a million, so I'll give you 250 now to do one, two, three. And 20 years later, they're still asking for the same widget to be replaced. So that leaves us with a lot of archaic broken widgets or widgets that are just ticking by and they're working would be the kind of operating guy that, you know, you, your air conditioner is working either too hard or not hard enough, yeah. but it's an old air, air conditioner that's using a ton of energy to do what it, it's doing. Yeah. So the, the, the smartness, you're right, the energy world has rapidly become very integrated, the worlds of efficiency renewables, but the internet of things in the energy space has come up very rapidly. So the interconnectivity of all these widgets and gadgets, I won't use their real terms, but everything to work properly is very important, not just for our customer, but also for the utility here because we don't want to have all these spikes of demands and right. loads all over right. the utilities grid. So increasingly, uh, we're a key partner to the utility as well because we have to integrate all our work with the, the grid side of it as well because it does impact one, one another and that can impact a neighborhood. Sure. So it's become a very interesting space and incredibly dynamic. Yeah, I always said that uh, energy is technology. Yep. We, you know, it, it used to be not so, but or at least not so much so. Now it's turned into technology, and if you see those uh, new uh, inverters on the solar on the solar systems, you see the connections uh, among the grid elements and uh, with storage. Woo, big technology yep. and storage. Yep. storage is I coming mean, up. Technology in many many different ways and goes into that. And efficiencies, energy efficiency, that's technology too. 
Absolutely. So you guys are into technology, and I went when I went to see this uh, program you had, uh, Pacific Guardian, which is kind of like your home base yeah. downtown, a couple blocks away, and you had an engineer there, and uh, I must say, and the room was full of building engineers and you know building owners, I suppose, from downtown who were interested in what was going on at Pacific Guardian with Amoresco, and he was talking a language that was so far over my head. It was it was really it was all technology. Efficiency is technology, yeah. but before it would be turn off the lights. Oh no, it's much more than that. Exactly, right? and that's why the uh, for me you know, the company we acquired was, was called, previously known as Chelsea Group. Um, that came about just because I was so impressed with the team there. They're young, very intelligent, cutting edge, and really focused on quality. And that's what we're about. We do, we're focusing on delivering the solution for the customer as a long-term partner in this space because. The, the building management is very hectic and busy and you're putting out fires all the time. Energy management requires a different way of looking through a different lens at the building and, and making strategic investments in that building infrastructure that have a long term, not just energy result, but here in Hawaii, energy is money. So, you know, the boss of the building loves our work, but mm. a building manager rarely is a good energy manager and a good building manager. They're slightly different skill sets. And slowly the industry has realized this, and that's why we have these ESCO companies and the ESPC financing models that can really help a building owner become a lot more successful. And, you know, for me personally, like in Hawaii, it's very expensive to do business. So if a building owner isn't thinking about the rates that they're just passing through to their tenants, it's not really a long-term sustainable vision for an owner to think that way. In my view, if I was a billionaire and I owned a building, I'd make it as efficient as possible so I could make the rates as low as possible for my tenants. So their buildings, you know, we have long-term tenancy and productive, constructive businesses that are hiring people for a long term in Hawaii. That's kind of the, the long-term goal. Well, I think it's very important. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a, what do you want to call it, a, a sort of commitment to the greater good involved in all of this because the building owner could pass the electrical costs, electricity costs on to the tenants. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he sends them a sheet in January, this is what it is, enjoy, mm -hmm. pay it, yep. uh, kind of thing. And that was the old model. But the new model is, and I don't think it's so much the tenants as it is the owners and managers. They want to do right by the tenants. This is something that they will attract, use to attract tenants to their building. They say, we care about renewables, we care about good rates, we, don't, we, 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 want, to, we want to make it cheap for you. Yeah, we, we don't want to, you know, goose you with, with high electrical rates. So we go into efficiency and we go into renewables and, and it benefits the tenants because the landlord is passing it through anyway. So this is a very, what do you call it, community minded kind of approach uh, when you do this sort of thing. And I, believe I, so, yeah. and I hope the tenants appreciate it. I hope you tell them about it well, so they know the benefit they're getting out of this because in the end of the day, they're paying less. Yeah, they'll pay less, and actually the, the other benefit is actually the improvement in performance is greater. So, you know, the, the lighting upgrades with LEDs and customized lighting, you can actually have different color, you know, depending on what you're actually working on, you can optimize the lighting performance and how the criteria works for that kind of mm -hmm. job category. Uh, air conditioning, obviously, you know, that classic here at movie theaters, right? How often do you go there and just end up freezing within 10 minutes that you walk in? Because everyone's in, you know, shorts, T-shirts, the flip-flops here, and then you walk in thinking, oh, yeah, I forgot again. Well, we can so, do better than that. Yeah, so there's, yeah, there's a lot of uh, things that we do need to change, and it costs a lot by not changing them. So, mm. yeah. What about the role of the building engineer? You know, back in the day, the building engineer would, um, you know, do very few technical things. Um, mostly he was there for Band-Aids. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's now it's different. Yeah, they, well, there's a lot of older building engineers that are still in their jobs because, you know, familiarity, they like, they well liked by all the tenants, the owners, they can trust them. But a lot of them don't keep up with the latest technology and skill sets. So, and it, it, it's not easy. Like, this stuff changes pretty quickly. And, you know, we're just adopt, adopting a new energy code now, too. So that's all going oh, sure. to force people to change. Oh, sure. We've plenty of shows about that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, Howard's always on that. So, um yeah, it's, it, it's going to kind of either they upgrade their skill sets or they have to partner with someone to adopt this stuff now. Yeah. So I think, you know, the state has to do this stuff to get to the energy goals it has yeah. to get to. So we don't really have a choice. It's just how we get there. Effectively, it's retraining a workforce of Absolutely. engineers. Absolutely. You know, even if they have an engineering degree, which a lot of them don't, um, they need to be retrained in the latest stuff. And the, 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 the conference I saw and, and filmed a few weeks ago um, involved a, a talk by an, a, a, an Amoresco engineer to building engineers yep. in, the, in the local downtown community 
And, um, you know, they were writing it down. They were taking notes <laughs> because those concepts and that, that equipment he was talking about, uh, you know, will help them do their jobs. So it's a, it's a raising all boats kind of experience yeah, exactly. when you have this. So the question is, you know, how much penetration do you have? You know, that was Pacific Guardian uh, uh, Center. There are other big buildings like that. Are they all getting a word? Are they all doing this? Um, or is this, a, you know, a, a slower process? I think it's a slower process, obviously, than what I'd like to see. I think, you know, for me, it's the sooner the better um, for either generation or efficiencies. Um, and the, the, the problem is really, in what I've experienced so far, it's really is that procurement method of the, the financial driving what they can afford to do and looking at it from uh, like a business procedural procurement method where the last gateway is your financial guy who's not an energy manager and not a facilities manager and just looks at it on a spreadsheet and says, wow, $2 million for a big air conditioner or something? What is that about? There's Scratch always that. a CFO in the wings somewhere, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, the, so that's why it's something like, you know, the solar power purchase agreement people are probably familiar with in Hawaii where there's no cash down, no money down, all these kind of things that sound too good to be true. In the energy services performance contracting, it's, it's a guaranteed energy savings model to the client. It's a very complicated spreadsheet of what's called energy conservation measures, which are the upgrades of all the widgets around the facilities. And it's basically a spreadsheet of old widget, if replaced by new widget, saves us this much energy, which was this much money. And then our company would fund all the investment upgrades so that the CFO sees a zero. All they have to do is commit to doing the project. We upgrade their facilities at our cost. And it's a 20-year or 25-year partnership between us and the facilities, which is paid back over the guaranteed energy savings for the lifetime of the project. And then the, the facilities probably, who knows what they're in state in 25 years. They've probably got other things going. But usually the payback period is very impressive. And it relies on that partnership of you know, the facilities managers. If they're not going to get the funding to do it and they're not going to do it themselves some other way, that's the only option right now, really. To, they, they, they can get this work done. Yeah. yeah. Well, you mentioned, I mean, this is really, a, uh, it's a financing arrangement yep. at the end of the day. It is, yes. Because the, the cost of upgrading the building, Amoresco is bearing that cost. But then uh, the, uh, I guess what happens is it, it will recover that cost over time by virtue of the guaranteed uh, success feature yep. in the contract. Um, and it, so that's hard to underwrite. Huh? Yeah, but especially talking about a 25 year term, you got to look into the future and figure out not only what the expectations of the building are, you know, the demands, but also what the technology is going to be changing going forward. Yeah, this is really a, a pretty hard thing to do. It's, it's interesting. Do you do that, James? I definitely don't. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I kind of keep it on how far I can see on the end of my arm. So and you, that, that works for Hawaii. So you, we, we know we're going to have amazing technologies coming down the pipeline. So. You know, everyone's talked about you know, solar windows and solar roadways, all this incredible stuff, right, that you never see. But um, there, are, there will be some game changes for sure. But the, the key thing is that to do something today and start getting those savings are bankable day one. The, st the moment that the, the upgrades are done, you start saving immediately. If you have an, a groundbreaking technology in whatever aspect of the building, you can incorporate that later. It's only going to mean you save more. It doesn't mean that you can't do it. And that, that's, you know, it, it, what we build into these things aren't fixed by any means. It's, it's, so you can revise it as you oh, go down you, the pike. You revise it on, on, a, on, a, on a cash flow and performance positive So you're always looking. Partnership. You're always yeah. trying to tune it, make it perfect. Yeah, well, tuning is another part of it. So the, you know, these things don't just sit aside without maintenance either. We need people employed as technology you know, engineers, O&M, the operations and maintenance side of it's just as important. It's, it's like a bicycle. Mm -hmm. You've got to keep moving the, the chain and keep the tires going around. Otherwise, especially in our climate, it's going to start rusting up. There's no choice up. about that. Yeah, you so, have to change with the times. Yeah, so we, yeah, we need the, ma the maintenance side of it, mm -hmm. but also the verification to see you know, what else is out there. Does it make sense to upgrade it? And then through the savings, the client might be able to fund a special, like this, the UH have started this green re re revolving loan fund where they take the savings out of those projects, put them into a special account, and that account buys new things to save more energy. So that's, that's a, very, a similar kind of creative financial method that's, that's a really good idea. We are learning, aren't we? Uh, every day, industry, every day. Amoresco is a, is a great uh, you know, entry into the marketplace here, a great player because uh, it brings new wisdom to us, new techniques, uh, new best practices maybe that we, did, we weren't aware of before. Yeah. 
One last question I wanted to ask. You're a solar guy, or at least your background is in solar. Um, and I wonder how important solar is in, in building efficiency and in building renewable sources. Uh, because the, the, the footprints on some of these big buildings mm -hmm. uh, with current solar technology is not all that big. Yep. So how do you play that? How do you play solar? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's always site specific. Solar is directly powered by the sun, so you can't have shading. Uh, you know, rainfall is an issue, clouds, just that general lack of solar radiation drops performance, which is your direct financial return on investment. So uh, I'm very excited by the community-based renewable energy program that's it's ah, started yeah. now. Sure. So I, I've been looking a bit into that, and I think that's got great potential going forward in the bigger phase where it really ramps up. So that'll be a lot of the really utility solar that's going to do it because we can't power all the skyscrapers in Kakaako and Waikiki from solar. It's going to rely on a intercombined grid that's going to get uh, clean energy somewhere else and then basically wheel it to those other customers. How about batteries? Are batteries uh, included in the kind of setups you should yeah. create? Pretty well mandatory now. Yeah, it, it's hard to find a grid that's not solar saturated is the term. You know, the, again, the, the amount of uh, solar saturation on the grid does cause some problems for the utility. So the batteries provide a, a short-term storage point all the way around the grid. Then more and more in different projects we'll see, we'll be installing batteries nearly on everyone, which is a whole new, interesting, exciting technology line, which is uh, you know, going to be pretty interesting too. Very interesting to talk to you, James. Thank you for coming down. Pleasure, Jay. Good really to see you. Really appreciate it. I want to hear more about Amoresco going forward or its new adventures and, and projects and ideas uh, we won't want to share. Yeah. Thank you so much, James McKay. Look forward to it. I know you were a shy child. Very. I was, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Making up for it now. <laughs>